second. I'm recording. Okay. Recording. I see it. It says recording. There you go. Okay. In this series, different librarians will cover topics on UNCG library resources and research tools. The 30-minute webinars will be recorded in WebEx Meeting Center and placed on the library website for the webinars, which I'm going to put in the chat right now. There we go. The page will contain applicable links and presentation materials when applicable. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about how the webinar is going to run. Please mute your audio during the presentation. Um, but feel free to turn it back on by clicking the audio icon at the end of the webinar if you would like to participate in a conversation with the presenters. If you don't have a microphone, you're welcome to participate on the chat. Um, if you have questions as they go through the webinar, please put them in the chat and I'll be keeping an eye on those um, and I'll get them answered for you once the presentation is over. Um, before we get started, does anybody have any questions? Can everybody hear me? We can hear you, Amy. Yay, thank you, Anna and Tiffany. So this session is on open access scholarship support and it's being presented by Anna Kraft, who's the UNCG Library's Coordinator of Metadata Services, and Tiffany Henry, who's UNCG Library's Discovery Cataloger. I'm now gonna hand over the hosting abilities to Anna so that she and Tiffany can begin. Here we go. All right. All right. I am going to hopefully share our screen. And we can get started. So thank you guys for coming. As Amy said, I'm Anna Kraft, and I'm the coordinator of Metadata Services. And I'm Tiffany Henry, the Discovery Cataloger. Thank you for joining us. Here's our agenda for this webinar. First, we'll go over a brief definition of open access. Then we'll cover some of the services that we offer here at the University Libraries that focus on providing open access materials to our users such as NC Docs, our institutional repository, research data support, our open access publishing fund, and open journal systems. As shown here, open access is providing unrestricted electronic access to scholarly research. We'll touch on some of the benefits as we go through the presentation. One excellent tool and service we provide to facilitate open access scholarly work is NC Docs. NC Docs is UNCG's open access institutional repository. It's been around since 2007 and currently includes around 9,500 faculty and student works. Approximately 60% of the current UNC faculty members have a profile with at least one publication attached. Here are some of the larger overarching goals for NC Docs. One goal is to help promote all the wonderful work that UNCG faculty and students do. With the institutional repository, we want to help researchers by providing a space to showcase their scholarship and make it easy as possible by handling details such as copyright permissions, uploading content, and maintenance. Another goal is to raise awareness around the issue of open access on campus by offering these services to the academic community here. Having an open access institutional repository here gives us a chance to provide all the benefits that come with open access and a research ecosystem that frequently places scholarship behind an expensive paywall. Open access can function as an equalizer of sorts and lets anyone view scholarship regardless of who they are. We can also help authors better understand the rights they retain once they publish in a journal and for self-archiving and their self-archiving their off scholarship. We are more than happy to answer questions regarding your scholarship and copyright. And finally, NC Docs can help with fulfilling funding agency mandates by providing a place to house publicly funded research. NC Docs is one of many repositories that can be used to share open access scholarship, but unlike other repositories, it was built and is hosted and managed on this campus. The university libraries are committed to being stewards of the scholarly output of this campus by making sure that files are migrated to new formats as needed in the future, and, as mentioned earlier, we are committed to helping faculty members fulfill public access requirements set by the grant and funding agencies. I also want to mention that NC Doc profiles can provide download counts for works that have been added to the repository. 
This metric can be helpful for researchers to help gauge the visibility of their scholarship and useful for faculty reappointment and tenure portfolios. Here's a screenshot and link to an of the NC Docs homepage. At the very top, a tab that will allow users to view the repositories of our partner schools, along with Appalachian State University, East Carolina University, UNC Pembroke, UNC Wilmington, UNC Greensboro is a founding member of the NC Docs Partners Group. Since the infrastructure for the institutional repository is housed here at UNCG, we take a leadership role in the Partners Group. Because we have the technical support available here, we can provide this service to other UNC system schools, saving us all the expense of implementing a pricey commercial institutional repository. So let me go back to that real quick. There's something else I want to mention. Including UNCG, there are currently nine universities that participate in NC Docs, which may go to 10 in the near future. Each school has a similar landing page with some branding. Below the search bar and further down the home page, there is a list highlighting some of the most recent additions to NC Docs. And to the right, there's a space that will display a featured piece of scholarship which rotates regularly. Let me go ahead. You can provide personal research profiles for faculty members. In addition to showcasing their scholarly work, faculty members can send us extra information to complete their profiles. Here we have a screenshot of and link to Dr. Perg's profile, a faculty member from the LIS department here on campus. On her profile, she has a photograph, her title, her contact information, a link to her departmental page, plus a brief background and research summary. Another benefit to NC Docs is the visibility we can provide by being indexed by Google. As shown by the screenshot here, items from NC Docs ranks well in Google, plus a significant portion of NC Docs online traffic comes from Google searches. So users searching on the open web for a specific topic or researcher are likely to find works or profiles that are in NC Docs. One great illustration of this increased visibility that NC Docs can provide for researchers comes from Dr. Sylvia's profile. Paul Sylvia from the psychology department is a prolific writer with well over 100 publications on his profile and an active researcher. As you can see, one of his publications has over 30,000 downloads. NC Docs can handle a variety of formats. Text-based works such as journal articles are the most common. NC Docs can also ingest image-based works such as presentation slides, plus a variety of audio and visual files. If you're unsure if a certain file or media tech can be added to NC Docs, please feel free to ask us. And now I'll turn it over to my colleague, Anna. All right, thank you, Tiffany. So, why would you want to use NC Docs when there are other options out there? You may have heard of academia.edu, ResearchGate or other similar repositories. So what's the difference between those and things like NC Docs? So NC Docs supports export or harvesting of data. We share data with other services like Google and like WorldCat, making your scholarship more visible in more places and then promoting hopefully people finding it and using it. We also support long-term preservation, which Tiffany touched on a moment ago. So if file types change or need to be migrated in the future, say PDFs are suddenly no longer used um, or there's not software that's able to read them. I imagine that this would not happen anytime soon, but sometime down, down the line, maybe that's not an accepted format anymore. We would take care of migrating those files to whatever the new and supported file types would be so that people could continue to access your scholarship. Our business model is nonprofit. We're not looking to make money off you, your colleagues, your address book. We're not trying to sell you anything. Uh, the other services that I mentioned are commercial. Um, they may be trying to sell you something or trying to sell your data. We're not gonna be sending you lots of emails by default, and we're not gonna be asking for your address book. So I'm not here to tell you not to use those other services, but I do wanna highlight some of the ways that we are different and that we are really trying to support you and your research. So do consider us when you're thinking about a home for your scholarship. 
And also think about NC Docs when you're considering or when you have uh, work that's in the news. So this is an example from earlier this year that I really like. We had a PhD student, Ahmed. He's a student in the right in that photograph. Uh, he graduated from the counseling PhD program this May, and he approached one of our liaison librarians on, I think, May 15th and said, there's a, a news story that's going to be going live on campus news on Wednesday, two days later, and I really want to have some links to my scholarship in that piece, but I don't have a place to put them. Can you help me find a place a, a good place that's going to continue to be available to put my scholarship. So that liaison librarian called me and I'm really glad that she did because this was a great addition to NC Docs. We were able to add several of Ahmed's publications. You see a couple of examples on this slide. And we were able to set up a profile for him very quickly so that we could then share those links with Campus News in time for the story to go live later that week. So this is the sort of thing that we would love to be involved in uh, with your research as well. So if you know that your research is going to be highlighted, whether it's campus news or an external news group, um, let us know because we may be able to host your work and provide links that could then be shared with those groups. We would definitely love to continue to find ways to highlight the scholarship that's coming out of UNCG. So how can you participate? You can contact me or Tiffany directly, or you can contact our general email address, ncdocs at uncg.edu. You can send us your materials directly through email, your articles, slides, or other works, or you can just send us your CV. Either way, we're going to be taking care of checking copyright for your works, uh, making sure that we can get clearance to post those works, um, in the database, we can't necessarily add everything because we do have to make sure that we get copyright clearance. But we take care of checking with publishers and checking on their policies. We also take care of uploading materials into the database. So we try to make things very easy for you. We'll also set up your profile with whatever information you would like to provide. And so that previous slide was really focused on faculty, but students can participate in NC Docs too. If you have students or if you are a student and you are traditional, you're working in traditional publishing, you've published articles or you've presented your scholarship, in that case, the process is the same as for faculty. Just contact us. If that work has been through some sort of peer review for publication or peer review and selection for a conference, then we would be glad to add it. For course-based scholarship, the process is slightly different. So in that case, students would need a faculty sponsor. This could be a faculty member, the faculty member from the course, or it could be perhaps an advisor, but someone who is signing off on that paper or that project and saying this is of significant academic merit um, to be added to this database. We want to share this with the world. Uh, it's slightly different with electronic theses and dissertations, which are added automatically through a partnership with the graduate school. And we also have uh, some workflows in place with the honors college to provide the option to add honors papers. So if you have a, if, if you are working with students who you think would be, um, are creating scholarship that would be good to put into NC Docs and you have questions about this, definitely get in touch with us. We would be glad to talk more about this. So now I want to talk about some of our other related services. What about research data? This is connected to open access and to NC Docs, of course, um, but research data is usually, we're thinking about this perhaps at the beginning of your uh, project when you're thinking about planning your research. We do offer data management planning resources. We can help with the creation of data management plans. And when you reach the end of your data collection, or even while the data collection is ongoing, we can uh, provide housing, hosting, and archiving for data through a partnership with the Odom Dataverse at UNC Chapel Hill. This, uh, the Dataverse at Chapel Hill may not be the best solution for all data types, but there are many other hosting and sharing options out there, and we would be glad to have consultations on selecting a data archiving platform for your scholarship. 
just get in touch to learn more. At the bottom, there's a link there that my colleague Linda runs. She um, is sort of a data guru, and I work with her on this. So we would be glad to talk to you about research data and how we can support your work in that area. We also have an open access publishing fund. This offers grants of up to $1,000 per article to offset the cost of publishing in open access journals. There's a limit with that of one award per fiscal year per author. So we do generally give out multiple awards per year, just one per author. Um, and we have a link there, which we can, I know it's not the easiest to copy down, but we can share that uh, either through the chat or afterwards uh, with the slides in an easier fashion. Um, so who is eligible for this? Full-time faculty, full-time EPA employees, and enrolled graduate students are all eligible for this award. And regardless of whether or not you are applying for or get this award, we can help you determine the legitimacy of open access journals if you're considering publishing in them. So we do know that there are predatory open access journals out there that may not provide any peer review or any um, services like layout or copy editing. They may just publish anything. Um, but we, we have some things in place that can help determine the legitimacy of OA journals. And we would be glad to talk to you about that if you need help in that area. We also provide open journal systems. So this is an open source piece of software which is designed to assist in the publication of peer reviewed open access journals. We host this here on campus and we currently have 12 active journals with a variety of topics. I'll show them on the next slide. So as you can see, these are the current, um, current active journals, many different topics from archives to peace research to learning spaces, math and statistics, and more. These are just the ones that are live and active right now. There are others that are actually in development. Here's an example of an article from the Journal of Backcountry Studies. All of the journals on that previous list uh, post and share their scholarship completely openly. So anyone anywhere can access and download these articles if they have an internet connection. They're generally available as PDFs, so they're very easy to use. And the journals are also highly visible on the web. Here I did a search for archival practice, one of our journals in Google, and the, the uh, library journal site is the first result that I got. These journals are also in WorldCat and available through other services as well. So they're very discoverable. So what's the difference between NC Docs, which Tiffany talked about, and Open Journal Systems, or OJS? Both of these are open access databases that provide scholarship, but NC Docs is really focused on scholarship that is produced by UNCG faculty, students, and staff. And it includes profiles for our researchers. Whereas Open Journal Systems, it's also sharing open access scholarship, and it all, our journals all have at least one person from UNCG who is involved, generally as a journal manager or editor or something like that, but the scholarship that they're publishing isn't necessarily from UNCG. That scholarship may be from researchers around the country or around the world. So those, in the, in the case of OJS, the UNCG people are typically more behind the scenes with the editorial boards and the creation of the journals, and they may not be the authors of the scholarship. If you're interested in learning more about OJS, perhaps how you can use it in your courses, if you're interested in potentially moving an existing journal to this platform or in starting a new journal, definitely ask us. As I said before, there are, with each journal, there's at least one UNCG person involved but the editorial boards and the staffs of these journals often have people who are at institutions across the country, around the world, not necessarily at UNCG. Um, and we would be glad to talk to you more about how, how all of that works. Um, so a brief recap, these are the services that we talked about today. NC Docs for sharing UNCG scholarship, research data management for helping prepare your data management plans, and for helping host and archive your data. Our open access publishing fund for providing uh, grants to offset the cost of publishing in open access journals. 
and open journal systems to create and publish open access journals. If you have questions about any of these, we would be delighted to take them um, either now or if you have questions that come up in the future, definitely get in touch. So thank you for your time. I'm gonna uh, click out of sharing the screen so that we can see the chat now. All right. All right, thank you. Both. That was wonderful. And does it, I haven't seen any questions in the chat, but does anybody have a question that you'd like to ask either by chat or um, by mic? Either way. And it is fine if you don't have questions right now. Um, as I said before, we, uh, we just want to share the information about all these services and try to help promote and let people know that what we're doing. And if questions do come up, we're here um, and we would be glad to talk to you about any of these in the future. We really appreciate y'all coming out today and listening. And this webinar will be available, as Amy said, on um, that uh, site that she shared so that people will be able to access it in the future as well. Yes, and I'll also be sending you an email um, in, in a day or so that um, will have the link to the recording of the webinar. All right, well, if there are no questions right now, um, again, please know that you can reach out to Anna and Tiffany, or I posted um, the link to the, or the NC Docs email address in the chat as well. Um, so. You know, if, if there's nothing today, thank you so much for coming and feel free to reach out to them later if questions arise. Yes, definitely. And thank you, Amy, for hosting. We really appreciate your help with this. Oh, thanks, guys. Well, everyone, have a lovely and wonderful Thursday. You as well. All right, I'm going to mute us and sign on out of here. <laughs>